This is Dylan, year 11 student who excelled in basketball, drama, and mathematics. His parents have high ambitions for him to receive scholarship to attend a prestigious university in the United States. Due to late maturing in comparison to his age-related peers, Dylan has issues in three developmental areas, brain development, physical development, social development. According to the brain development, Dylan as an adolescent, his brain functions differently than adults when decision-making and problem-solving. His actions are guided more by the emotional control system and less by the cognitive control system because according to Geet 2008, the later, latter system matures later. According to KCL 2008 and Stamberg 2008, Dylan is now more likely to act on impulse, misread or misinterpret social cues and emotions get into accidents of all kinds, get involved in fights, and engage in dangerous or risky behavior. Moreover, he's less likely to think before he acts, both to consider the potential consequences of his actions and modify his dangerous or inappropriate behavior. Puberty is one of the biggest developmental milestones for the physical and social transitions into adolescence. It should be noted that a late developing boy is very obvious due to the physical changes that they are yet to undergo. Dylan is late maturing, meaning he has low body fat and does not have much hair growth on his face, chest, arms, legs and back. Other signs of late maturation that Dylan possesses are a high-pitched voice, a small body stature and is not as strong as his early maturing peers. This places Dylan at a higher risk of engaging in deviant behaviour due to feeling ne- neglected among his peers Also, he is no longer being selected for leadership roles in basketball, which will result in Dylan feeling inadequate, more dependent, and may possess a low status in comparison to his peers. Social development. In Dylan's case, due to late maturation, his egocentrism is causing him to anticipate negative reactions of his friends in social groups. Personal fable, as explained by Elkind, makes Dylan feel that no one can understand him because no one can share his unique experience. His results in isolating from social peers and school activities. These factors along with optimistic bias plays major role in Dylan's risk-taking behavior such as smoking. Social withdrawal behavior. Bovin and others view social withdrawal as a behavioral index of Dylan's rejection or exclusion by the peer group due to his late maturation. It could stem from his internalized thoughts and feelings about himself which causes social anxiety or depression. Anderson and others explain that late maturing boys have higher rates of alcohol use and delinquency. The reasons for his, this remains unclear, but it's been suggested that it could be due to low expectations. Boys who late mature may not be expected to perform the same way as boys who mature on time or early and therefore they may not feel the need to try harder. Dylan's parents are very concerned about his decline and current welfare. They have contacted his year advisor and are seeking advice regarding potential interventions from his teacher and school. Research on teaching interventions to assist Dylan. First, professional help. According to Harter and others, professionals can identify Dylan's characteristics and get the extra help he needs. They can make sense of and manage his distressing thoughts and feelings in order to promote psychological well-being also enable him to communicate difficult experiences and, through using evidence-based theories and models, help him to process his thoughts and feelings to reduce the level of distress. Second, drama therapy. Catalano and others, uh, since he still enjoys drama, it can be used to uplift his self-esteem, giving Dylan knowledge and skills that can be his basis of real achievements in the classroom can help him lift his self-esteem. Creating interest clubs such as a basketball or drama club for lower classes and ask Dylan to be the coach of this club. Third intervention, strengthening the support system from family parent support. Bernson, Ogenen and Perry claim that if parents provide love and encouragement, adolescent self-esteem is enhanced. Open communication between school and parents can help monitor his chanting and help him stay in school. Such communication system also increases Dylan's participation in school activities by drawing on his personal experiences, letting parents know about classroom events and deadlines, offering a venue for problem solving and reporting on progress according to David in 2004. Dylan's data progress towered goals and provided feedback on his mood and interactions through a home school communication notebook. This notebook 
also enables the family to keep the school up to date on events at home and other helpful information. From teacher's side, increasing levels of teachers' support had corresponding decrease in depression and increase in self-esteem among students, according to Reddy L. 2003. According to Murray and Piantan 2007, this support can be translated and fostered through positive feedback and praise to Dylan's daily behavior and performance. This feedback will shape his beliefs about his own ability that will influence his mindset. Moreover, teacher can increase the group work in class, as according to Perkins 1993, it's a way to allow Dylan share his cognitive responsibilities and elevate his school stress by engaging in. From Pierce's side, Vaikovsky views interaction with peers as an effective way of developing skills and strategies. Thus, peer scaffolding will be an effective way to help Dylan progress in his academic performance where he will work with others to better understand the material or concept being applied. The final intervention is a whole school approach. School connectedness can be defined as the extent to which students feel personally accepted, respected and included and, in, and supported by others in the school environment. This has been identified as a critical protective factor in adolescent development. Children and young people with a high level of school connectedness are less likely to engage in violence and substance abuse. In saying this, there are many strategies schools can use to increase school connectedness. One strategy that may be implemented in the school is social and emotional learning programs, which have been proven to enhance student resilience. Examples of specific programs which can be used are Smiling Minds and Mind Up. These programs foster the development of well-being traits using social, emotional and self-regulating strategies which help students build on their cognitive skills. More specifically, these programs can assist Dylan to better manage his behaviour, allowing him to feel a sense of belonging in this school network, and in turn increase his engagement in academic and sport achievement. Jerlak proved in his analysis that students who are involved in social emotional programs are more likely to achieve better academic results. However, the potential ramifications of implementing SEL programs into schools is the time constraints of being able to teach resilience to students in limited amount of time. Also, pro programs are deemed expensive to find and require high level of school commitment in cooperative new programs. The second strategy that can be implemented in the whole school approach can be addressed as a classroom approach. The promotion of supportive relationships, opportunities to belong, positive social norms and opportunities for skill building are all strategies teachers can implement in the classroom to help Dylan disengage in risky behaviours. Dylan's passion for drama can be utilised as a way to help build up his confidence and be able to excel in his other subjects. The recognition of academic competency will allow Dylan to build resilience and personal achievement skills. Building on the strength-based approach, drama therapy is another method that can be implemented to assist Dylan. Due to Dylan's interest in drama, it may be an approach which encourages him to seek help in an indirect and effective manner. Drama therapy works to empower students and assist them with their daily struggles in a fun and interactive way. It uses role play and acting to allow students to develop a greater awareness of their emotions and actions in their daily lives. It has been proven to be effective in schools with, with at-risk students to improve behaviour, school engagement and academic achievement. Some disadvantages there are with this approach is the lack of extensive evidence in support for drama therapy. Furthermore, it may be quite costly for the school to employ a team of drama therapists for this purpose. In conclusion, a range of approaches have been proposed to assist Dylan inside and outside the classroom. In Adolescent Development and Teaching Unit, I was overwhelmed with interesting facts on physical, cognitive, social and emotional development of adolescents. The integration of content was across various approaches such as cultural, historical and psychological. I was personally influenced by theoretical perspectives and how it contributes to their holistic development. In this semester, I developed new understanding and realization of what it means to be a secondary school teacher. The theory, practice and research in this unit was influential and empowering. I aim at implementing my theoretical knowledge to my everyday pedagogical strategies and become a competent science teacher. The information I gained on biological and cognitive development of adolescents helped me to acquire a deeper understanding of adolescent behavior. 
Steinberg's hot and cold cognition theory allowed me to see how early and late maturation of a student affects their risk taking behavior. Common myth about adolescent behavior influenced by hormonal changes was broken and research based factual information such as genetic factors, pubertal timings and brain development were provided. Being a science student, I was aware of brain development and its processing, but I learned new perspective on memory and cognitive overload and how it affects students learning. Knowledge on causes of extraneous load, redundancy, split attention and advanced learners was vital to design my instructional strategies. For instance, tailoring lessons according to students existing knowledge and skill, gradual increase in complexity of the task, less redundant information and avoiding split attention by organizing information. Moreover, zone of proximal development and scaffolding are beneficial in shifting from teacher led lectures to student center ones. I aim at mastering collaborative and cooperative learning practices in order to differentiate my instructions and cater to whole class. Finally, social and emotional learning provided me with the most valuable input about adolescent. As a teacher, my focus will not only be on a cognitive abilities but also non-cognitive ones. Erickson's identity stages shows specific event and basic conflict a child learns before moving on to next and how inability to achieve the stage leads to difficult behavior. For ensuring success for all students, teachers should teach cognitive and non-cognitive skills such as self-control and social competence, which are well-established predictors of success in academic career and well-being. Thank you. This unit made me aware that during adolescence, the body and the brain witness a huge development that can affect individuals either positively or negatively, where as a future teacher, I play an enormous role in helping students to manage these changes and thrive. Uh, as, in, as it is the last chance in their lives to acquire all the skills and capabilities they need before starting their journey independently. Thus, I should use positive education not only to maximize their students' learnings and creativity, but also to enhance their well-being by developing resilience in them. Through cognitive law theory, we were able to know how the humans learn and stores knowledge and how optimizing the load on students' working memory helps in successfully transferring new information into the long-term mem long memory to maximize learning. As a future science and math teacher, this can be done by applying instructional techniques that will help in reducing the load on the working memory and allow the information to be transferred successfully to the long-term memory. Uh, such as using more worked examples in math and physics to help students remember the rules, uh, eliminate split attention by integrating diagrams and solution statements, uh, remove redundant information, and apply both types of communication, visual and auditory. I should teach across the mental health spectrum, as mental health is a state of well-being in which students realize their abilities, can cope with the normal stress of life, and can work productively and fruitfully and make contribution to their community that's also imposed by the New South Wales Education Department through the framework of well-being. So I'll help them to develop resilience by creating a safe and supportive environment, regardless of their backgrounds or their identities, through care, praise, and positive feedback, uh, putting positive and high expectations, uh, through believing in my students, acknowledging their strength and achievements, engaging them, and ensuring success. Providing opportunities to participate and contribute through encouraging participation, listening and respecting to their opinion, creating cooperative activities, encouraging them to involve in the community through environmental uh, projects, for example. Uh, help them develop personal strengths, such as developing their problem-solving skills by providing more science and ma or math questions uh, that needs more critical thinking. Thank you. This unit has opened my eyes to the many issues faced by adolescent students and the theories associated with them, which I wasn't aware of prior to the completion of this unit. As a PDHPE teacher, it is important to understand the reasons why adolescent teenagers undergo the physical, cognitive and social changes that occur. More specifically, learning about G. Stanley Hall's theory, where he believes adolescence is a period of storm and stress, was an eye-opener as I've come to realise that adolescent mood swings tend to peak at this stage. Although research suggests that it is an exaggerated claim, I believe it is still defined this way because what people perceive as a stressful matter may seem insignificant to others. However, this will always occur. And as a teacher, it is imperative to acknowledge and address their feelings and most importantly, ensure that they are handling the matter in a safe, risk-free and effective way by educating them on ways they can address their problems. 
My main aim as a PDHPE teacher would be to ensure students are health literate, meaning they are well informed and educated on the risks adolescent teenagers seem to take and the consequences they carry. For example, it is important to educate them on the physical changes of puberty and adolescence and make sure that they understand that everybody undergoes these changes differently and at different rates and that there is no right or wrong way to undergo puberty. This will ensure inclusion in the classroom and eliminate potential cases of alienation and marginalisation. By doing this, I am making the students' well-being a priority by ensuring they feel included, respected and safe in the school environment. This will then ensure that their cognitive and social development is not compromised.